When Will was born, I was absolutely ecstatic. She was our first and she's our only. Nothing very unusual happened with Willa um, until she was about two or three years old. I took her to the local park. Lots of kids playing, lots of people around. It's a late spring day. I was just sitting not too far from her watching her. And she was standing looking at a tree. It was a fairly good sized tree and there was a, a limb that came sort of out from the side where somebody could reasonably be sitting. And then I could see that she was talking to the tree. And my first thought was, isn't that sweet? She loves the tree and she's talking to trees. When we got back from the park, she was drawing with chalk in the driveway and she said, I'm going to draw you my other mother. And I didn't want to frighten her. And I said, well, tell me about your other mother. And she said, well, she was up in the tree. I said, why was she in the tree? And she said, well, she only had one leg. She was bit by a snake and a bad doctor tried to save her and he cut off her leg, but she still died anyway. And she said, get me down, help me down. And I told her, can't you see I'm little now? I can't help you down. And she told this woman, her other mother, she said, I have to go now, I have a new mother. And she walked away. When I realized that Willa was actually talking about another mother that she had had, I was shocked. I thought, I don't know what's happening. Willa never mentioned her other mother to me directly. Her mother was the one that she would talk to in more personal ways. I think it could be because I'm basically skeptical of just about everything. And then when Willa got older, she came to my husband and I and told us that she was seeing things. I would hear Willa move from her bedroom to maybe use the bathroom at night and hear her say, stop it. She told me that these two little girls, literally, who were ghosts, were actually playing, going boo. I don't think I ever felt that she was making it up to get attention. It wouldn't be the kind of attention that a child would want. These reports that she gave me of, of seeing ghosts, they were very disturbing to her. And then as she got a little bit older, she started having memories. It was difficult for Willow because she couldn't block them out. She lost a lot of sleep. She was nervous. Uh, she was sometimes frightened. For a mother to watch her child being petrified and abused, um, not by um, some child that I could have a talk with or an adult that I could have a conversation with, but something unseen. Who could we talk to about this? Um, are people gonna think she's crazy? Will was around eight or nine years old when she first asked me about kids being sent out west. I asked her, oh, is this uh, something you're studying in school? And she said no. She began asking questions mostly of Bill about orphans and about wagons and about orphans on wagons, children being sent places. You get one question and nothing for a while, and then another question and then nothing for a while. I became concerned. Well, I, I was at a loss. I simply didn't know what was going on. This is a time period where she had been dark and nervous and feeling like an outcast and not fitting in anywhere. So school was a place where Willa suffered a great deal. So it's ironic that it's also a place where she finally found answers. She came home, but she was so excited. And she said, I'm not crazy, I'm not crazy. And I said, what, what? And she said, the orphan train, orphan train, there was an orphan train. And she was putting it all together. She suddenly realized that some of the things that she had begun glimpsing had a basis in reality. When you realize that your child has been walking through her life afraid, petrified that she is crazy, and you don't even realize that about her. It's heartbreaking. When she first started asking about the orphan train, I just didn't know for sure what was going on. 
This was a deliberate move to take orphans out of the major East Coast cities and send them out to the Midwest where they could be adopted or at least taken in by families. Some of the kids had wonderful lives when this happened. There were other kids working uh, essentially as uh, chattel slaves. I didn't think about this as a past life until she began to say that herself. It's not that I didn't suspect, maybe, that there might be something there, but I don't think that I put it all together. It didn't come together un until she actually said, I, I think I was on that train. I really just didn't know what to make of it. I didn't think she was making up a story. There's no reason for me not to believe her. She has come up with some descriptions of herself. A flower dress, but the print isn't too big and it isn't too small. And she was young. She remembers looking up at the man and the woman that she thinks a doctor. She remembered something about the station and what it looked like. She's had memories of a very blonde boy who was also adopted at the same time she was, but he left in a wagon. He'd become her closest friend, almost like a brother to her on this trip. And she thinks that that's the reason why she kept thinking about the orphan wagon. She remembered there were hills, low hills. She just started to open up. I think learning about the orphan train at school was a turning point for her. We did a little research and discovered there is actually an orphan train museum, and it's in Concordia, Kansas, where they have attempted to gather as many records as possible about the orphan train. We have arranged to have Willa do some research there to see if she can find out anything more concrete about that past life of hers. My name is Willa and I'm 18 years old. I first started having memories of the orphan train when I was quite young. I do remember having the same dream over and over of the little boy. I'd remember me being a little girl in the dress. I'd remember getting off the train and seeing him taken away to another family. And I remember my family. and I even started remembering my name. I believe my name was Anna. This is gonna be very interesting. Even if I don't find any definitive records of Anna, I'll still be able to just see the other children who were like me. And I really am ready. Is there anything you want to tell me about your experience, your memories? I remember a lot of the kids had already been adopted off the train, so I would have been in one of the later states, Kansas or Nebraska. Okay. I would be about eight to 10 mm -hmm. at most. And I believe my name was Anna. This is a list of all the Annas that we have files on. Okay. And if there's any names that jump out at you at all. It had an R somewhere in it. Can we look at her? Anna mm -hmm. Ruth. OK. Let me see if I have a file here on her. It could have been Anna Reed, too, but there's an R. OK. So I was able to find limited information here. Uh, Anna Reed, all we have is that she was placed in Kansas. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any pictures in here. But there is limited information about Anna in this file, if you'd like to go through that. All right. I wasn't able to pinpoint exactly which Anna I was. I mean, there's a lot of missing files. I can make up a list for you of the towns they stopped in Kansas, and we can start researching the newspapers during those time periods to see right. if there's any names you jump out at you. I think I'm much closer to finding my Anna. Seeing everything, seeing the suitcases, the dresses, the pictures, the trains, it brought everything from a memory to the very front of my mind. I have real places to start now. I have the orphanage. I have the general area, the general time. And I think with that, I have enough of a starting point so that I can go out there and find my 